Hi there, it's Ian here, and you're watching Grumpy Opinions, the show where I'm going to tell you all about what I think of films, TV shows, games, and life in general. Let's get on with the show. Outlander is a time-travelling historical romance show from Stars Entertainment. It tells the tale of 1940s nurse Claire, cast through time by a magic stone circle to 1740s Scotland, where she met and fell in love with Jamie, a Scottish man on the run from the British Army. Season 1 saw her thrown through time, married to Jamie, put on trial as a witch and forced to flee the country with her husband after he was brutally raped and tortured by her 1940s husband's sadistic ancestor. Phew! Episode 1 of Season 2, Through a Glass Darkly, begins by completely pulling the rug out from under the audience as suddenly we're shown clear back at the stones, frantically upset and looking for an old ring that seems to be missing a stone. Then we see that she's actually back in 1940s, and it's not long before her long-suffering husband Frank finds her. But it's not the happy reunion he'd been hoping for, as Claire doesn't seem to see him in quite the same way anymore. So, it's back to the old reverence house, so that Claire can scour loads of books, desperate to find out about Culloden and stuff, and whether Jamie was killed, and with the help of wee old Mrs Graham, who apparently believes every word of the time travel stuff. Eventually, after Frank seems to have accepted his wife's given up on him, she agrees to tell him the whole story, and he takes it pretty well. Until that is, she mentions that she's actually up the duff with Jamie's baby. And Frank has a moment of almost blackjack-like rage getting all up in her face and then going and massacring a whole shed full of flower pots. But luckily, after a wee chat with the minister, Frank decides to do the decent thing and agrees to raise the bairn as his own on the condition that they raise it as his child, not Jamie's, and that they move to Boston so he can teach at Harvard. Claire agrees to this, and just as they're reaching the new world, the show cuts back to the 1740s and Jamie... Yep, they've arrived in France, and almost straight away, Claire is trying to make plans to stop the uprising. She wants to save all the Scotsmen and end Culloden, so she does so by infiltrating the Jacobite movement through Jamie's cousin, and after showing him Jamie's nasty back, they're welcomed into the fold. Of course, no story can do without a little antagonism, so the final scene shows us Claire wandering about on the dockside to spot some sick men being taken into a warehouse. She looks at them and realises they've got smallpox, and she's just about to get tilt off when Jamie arrives with his cousin and three of them end up embroiled in a really bad business as the comp de something or other who owns the ship that was full of the infected folk is trying to keep all this on the quiet quiet. You see, he might lose his ship and all its cargo if it finds out. Of course, Claire's nebs in the business hasn't helped matters and the harbour master ends up saying the ship and all the cargo has to be burned. And naturally, the comp blames them. I really hope that it didn't mean that the old sailors got burned as well. Anyway, the episode ends with a fiery ship and him looking nastily at them. Mm. Well, it's off to a grand start this season. As anyone who saw my trailer review will know, I was wondering how the adaptation from the book would differ, and it looks like, at least as far as the framing of Eister goes, it's kind of a lot. I mean, I'll definitely cover this at the end of the season, but for now... Not to spoil anything, I just say I think what they've done is a great idea. We get to start out really confused and intrigued by Claire's return. What's happened? Why is she back? When did she leave? What's this whole business about a strange ring? And why is she so frantic to know how Culloden turned out? Of course, some of these questions are answered easier than others, and some of them are left a mystery. But it's a far better open than the kind of languid, but still interesting start of the book. Pacing-wise, it also harks back to the very first episode of season one, with three quarters of it set in the 1940s and only the last little chunk back in the way back when. That leaves us anxious to find out what's going on, and this season is no different than the first. We're no further forward to knowing how Claire ended up at the Stones at the beginning, and only with more and more questions. And the actors in this did a fantastic job, but easily the major kudos is going to Tobias Menzies. I mean, his subtle and nuanced performance is Frank, who is kind of a bit of a stiff man and seems sort of unused to emotion and not really good at dealing with it. So it's kind of a fairly troubling journey from the kind of nervous excitement at the beginning and the relief when Claire comes back, and then the painful rejection and the absolute horror and anger and that he gets finding out that she's pregnant with another man's baby and his final acceptance. I mean, all that was marvellous, especially as it was actually done in pretty short shrift over the course of the episode. It was also really nice to see Franz as created by the Outlander team. I mean, it reminded me a lot of that movie Perfume, the one about the murderer who makes perfume in France, and it felt probably different to the Scottish scenes from the first season. Also speaking of which, I like the fact that the new intro is different, especially the way it starts off almost the same, but with a little bit of a different musical arrangement, and then all the imagery and scenes segue into completely different stuff, and it's all French, and then the music gets more interesting and sort of a little bit more exciting and upmarket. But, of course... I had some grumps with this episode. Well, where shall I start? Well, I'll begin with a personal gripe. 
Duncan Lacroix's accent hasn't gotten any better, and to be honest, I doubt it ever will. It's probably an artistic choice made by him and the acting team and the voice coach, but sorry, Duncan, you sound a bit as Scottish as a broken toaster stuck in a windmill. I really hoped he would have changed it between seasons, but no, it still sounds like somebody putting on a bad Scottish accent. I don't have any problem with the actor's work other than that. It just, that always grates me. Grates me completely. Takes me clean out of the series. But seriously, proper grumps with the episode. They actually mainly revolve around Claire. Not Katrina Balfe, but the character of Claire. Katrina's still just as good as she ever was. But something about this episode started to make Claire seem kind of oddly dislikable to me. Now, it could be this is actually intentional. I mean, at least in the 1940s scenes, as she might well be shell-shocked and broken by events as yet unseen by the audience. But her callousness towards Frank borders on being genuinely cruel. Now, I love Jamie and Claire, and for that Jamie and Claire to work, Claire and Frank can't work. But I have to still like Claire to actually care about what's going on, and she was trying the patience a lot in this episode. In the past as well, you know, happy, chirpy Claire, you know, she's still sticking her business, her nose in other people's business at the docks, and it manages to earn them an enemy without even really trying. All the while, Jamie's standing ready to punch people, you know, while who are actually trying to downplay the situation by getting her out of there and stopping her causing a panic. But now, I mean, I know she's trying to avert a medical disaster, and from that point of view, yeah, everything she does makes sense. But she doesn't know the place, or the situation, or the politics, and her strong-willed pig-headedness is getting them right into trouble from the first second that she's been left on her own. I mean, dearie me, control your wife, Lord Lalibroch. Honestly. But other than that, it's been pretty much plain sailing. I actually really liked this episode. I can't wait till next week. And hopefully I'll actually get the video up a little bit sooner. I was kind of busy today. But till then, thanks for listening, pals. I've been Ian, and these have been my Grumpy Opinions. <laughs>